Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by. It's a terrific day here in Ottawa, Canada. I think it's uh, like 22 today. For Ottawa, that's fantastic. Believe me, right around now, November, it's usually about five or six Celsius. In the uh, United States, it's all Fahrenheit, so five or six would be about 40 degrees out. It's pretty cold, it gets cold here in November, but today's gonna be like a summer day. So I thought, hey, summer day, why not do a video? Why, don't, why not talk about something in sobriety today? Because life is good one day at a time in sobriety, that's for sure. But uh, what I want to talk about today is something that I've done a lot of in early sobriety and I still do it sometimes now. And I have lots of sobriety, I have decades of sobriety. And what that is, is isolation. We isolate. And isolation in early recovery or even in long-term recovery can be a coping mechanism that we've learned. And I'm not talking about the kind of isolation that is self-care, that we're looking after ourselves. We had a tough day and we're just going home to have you know, a relaxing day. We're gonna shut ourselves off from the world. I'm talking about that. I'm talking about emotional isolation. I made videos before about emotions and how emotions can separate us from people, places, and things. And that's very, very true. We can be in a crowd of a thousand people if we feel guilt and shame and we don't feel good about ourselves. We don't feel that we're attached to the world we don't feel like we're a part of and that's what emotions can do can make us feel very very lonely to back it up a little bit what i'm talking about is emotional isolation when i was a child i'll just give you a few examples when i was a child i was always sent to my room i was never told or taught how to deal with my emotions i always dealt with my emotions by myself as a child no one really taught me how to express them so i was always alone to deal with my emotions and that carried on into teenage life too. No one really talked to me about emotions or when I was upset, how to get out of that mode. I was always put to the side. Like you're upset, Terry G, go to the side, go to your room, or you're hurt, I don't worry about it, grow up. Those, those kind of statements were told to me as a child. So I always learned at a very young age that when I was upset, I was to be quiet, go away and deal with it myself. And when I started to drink, that's how I dealt with my emotions. Oh, wow, well, I never dealt with my emotions, right? The world was against me. I was a failure. I couldn't accomplish anything. People were always mad at me. And I was always a lone wolf in the world. I always dealt with everything by myself in this world. When I was actively drinking, I always dealt with everything. My emotions, my anger, my hurt, my pain, whatever it may be, financial loss, whatever it was, I was always dealing with it by myself. It carried on into my recovery. So every time things were going bad for me in my life, I just shut the door and isolate. Stop going to meetings. Stop calling my sponsor. Stop calling my family. Maybe even stop calling my girlfriend. Want to be alone. The hell with her. The heck with her. I, I used to do that a lot. And because of that behavior, that's isolation. That's emotional isolation because we don't learn how to deal with our emotions. And one of the biggest indicators of relapse is emotional isolation. In my terms, I'm not a psychiatrist or psychologist. I'm just telling you my story and my awareness story. That's what I'm telling you here. So this isolation, this emotional isolation can be very detrimental to your recovery, your recovery journey. And being aware of it, when you're upset, something's not going right with you. You're not thinking properly and you tend to back off. You tend to isolate shut yourself off in the world that my friend is not a coping mechanism that is a destructive mechanism we don't have to deal with life on life terms by ourselves we never had to deal with life terms by ourselves we never had to it's just our, the way we were up we were brought up and when we started up into our alcoholism we didn't have to do life by ourselves but we thought we do we thought we had to make how to we thought we had to cope in life one day at a time by ourselves emotionally. And the way we did it, the way you did it, maybe the way I did it was I isolated and I tried to run through those feelings and get that, you know, get that mojo back working out things by myself. But that's not a correct way of doing it. Everybody needs self care. Everybody needs to shut down once in a while and relax. I get that. But a destructive decision to say, I've had enough. I'm going to isolate. I can't take this is irritable discontent thinking what we need to do is break that cycle everybody has a bad day 
everybody feels like putting their, cell, their heads underneath their covers and going to sleep for the day. But that is not gonna work. That doesn't work for, for adults, that's for sure. We need to find some way to express ourselves of how we feel or talk to ourselves in a way that we don't go and isolate. So finding a sponsor in a 12-step program, maybe a doctor, a psychiatrist, a psychologist, a girlfriend, a best friend, somebody that you can talk to about the way you feel and you'll feel better and you will not withdraw. Because when we get in the habit of withdrawing and I was in that habit of withdrawing, I, I get upset, I go to my room, stay in my room for like 10 hours. Imagine being married to me. That'd be crazy, right? That was an early sobriety because I couldn't deal with my emotions. So I always wanted to isolate. I always wanted to get away from the problem or away from the difficulties. Just be by myself, isolation. And it kept me in everlasting relapse or irritable discontent mode. And that behavior didn't allow me to grow in sobriety or mature as an adult, it didn't. So I needed to learn how to do that. And basically the way I did it is I went to counseling and learned to express my feelings, express my thoughts, my opinions, express myself in a positive way that I felt that I was getting this stuff off me and it was helping me and I didn't have the need to go back to the isolation. Did not need to have to go back by myself and just go over and over things all the time, ruminating about them guys or them or that resentment or they hurt me or I can't do this or I'm worthless, those kind of things. So emotional, isol emotional isolation is a real thing. It's a real thing and we all do it. I bet you did it. I bet you I've done it, okay? So learn how to be strong in those situations and break the pattern. When you feel like staying home, break that pattern and go to a meeting. Break that pattern and pick up the phone and call somebody. Tell them the way you feel. Tell them what's going on. You don't need them to reassure you. Just shine some light on it. Get it out of the dark and let people know that you're here, you're alive, and you're doing the best you can one day at a time. Because alcoholism takes a lot away from us. It took ourselves away from us. And just because we quit the booze doesn't mean the thinking or the emotions from the leftover alcoholism has stopped. We need to reinvent ourselves, find ourselves and do all that stuff because alcohol had another plan for us. And that was death and destruction at the end. Being by ourselves, being alone. But you're not alone and you're worth it, okay? So pay attention to emotional isolation. It's a real thing. I've done it. I have, I have done it in the past. I've done it in my sobriety. It doesn't work. It's destructive. It's harmful to the people around you, your loved ones, your home group, whatever it may be. They'll wonder what's going on with you, okay? So thanks a lot for stopping by. My name is Terry G. This is an alcohol-free life channel where we learn to live sober one day at a time. Thanks a lot for stopping by. If you can leave a comment, that's great. If you can't leave a comment, that's great too. But you can subscribe to my channel. I'd appreciate it and hit that like button, okay? So remember, stay safe, stay sober. God bless. Together, we can get sobriety. Together, we are strong. Ciao for now.